This is On The Wire, Racing TV's podcast for the best racing previews in association with Bar One Racing. Hello and welcome to On The Wire. We're coming towards the end of Royal Ascot as we record this. Actually, we're not even sure if Friday's meet is going to go ahead, which isn't good news for Adam McGuinness, who's our main um, interview on this week's show. And obviously he has a case of you running later on who would absolutely love the rain. So it just goes to show you wait for soft ground of Royal Ascot. And as Juki said, it's six is on to be called off at the moment, which is quite mad. Johnny MacDonald from Bar One Racing, our sponsor, is here with us. Fran Berry and Brendan Duke as ever. And uh, yeah, Juki just goes to show how crazy the weather situation is now that um, you're unlikely to get soft to heavy ground of Royal Ascot on a Friday. And if you do get it, the meet might be called off. It's it's thundery weather, Johnny. There's been thundery weather for the last hundred years. I know that doesn't suit your narrative, but there there is a possibility that the fact that the ground is waterlogged is more down to watering than global warming. I'm just uh, playing devil's advocate for you there. Not sure, not sure about that logic. But Fran, um, a highlight of Royal Ascot for you was going for a few pints in the local and having a Hawaiian pizza yesterday, I believe. <laughs> yeah, uh, day off yesterday and it snuck out to the pub to meet a friend of mine. And uh, yeah, we, we had a few pints of Guinness and I got picked up by, uh, by my wife and uh, brought her home a Hawaiian pizza. You can't get better than that, Johnny. That's what you call love, Johnny Mac. It is, yeah. And uh, love was very impressive, John. Oh, I like it. Oh, I didn't even need to do that. <laughs> what a performance. The race of the week, if you ask me. Toughness, first run back, Ryan Moore t- dictating and so forth. What would she find? Fantastic race. Yeah, she was brilliant. She's the next big star, I think, Johnny. Is she f- on, in, uh, in the racing game? I think she's going to be the star this season. Yeah, I tend to agree. Um, Fran, it was a special race. Yeah, it was a shame Palace, uh, not Palace Pier, that Lord North didn't run with the ground. But uh, look, love, we haven't seen her for a long time. She jumped out, made the running, and uh, she was never going to get beat, was she? You know, it just wants to r- arrive through queuing up behind her. But once Ryan got her into, into top gear, she was just getting stronger at the debt. And uh, she has to be more to come. And uh, it was a great start to her campaign. It's all about love, Juki. Yes, but uh, I mean, it was an interesting race. I, I was just struck by uh, the, the tactical dimension. I'm going to do a bit of name dropping here, but I once got a lift home from the races from the great Kieran Fallon, who very kindly gave me a lift home. And I asked him whether you were better off to ride the, the distance on its merits or try to fit the horse around the race, as in loves it, mile and a half, Billy mm. should ride it, gone, gone a bit harder earlier. And he was very much a believer that you should just ride the distance on its merit. So what he did was he took the soft lead and gradually wound it up as opposed to going hard from, from, from the get-go. So I thought it was an interesting ride. And But he, there would be an argument that maybe over that trip of those fractions, she probably... The, she, she was probably valued for a bit more in a, in a truly run race, and not to mention the fact that it was her, her comeback or whatever. So, so, so I, was, I was really impressed with her. And uh, yeah, she's a fashion fit. Yeah, Fran, I have to bring you in on that because, like, visually, it looked like Ryan Moore went a bit slow for, the, for her. But this, I mean, this is what it's all about when you have a race like this where she's making not only is she, you know, making a <coughs> seasonal return and she basically gets a soft lead, but she clearly wants further. So she doesn't want to turn into a sprint. But if she's at the head of the sprint, she's obviously advantaged. So there are, there's a lot going on in the jockey's head. And also the fact that he'll be probably slated if he's beat. Yeah, I suppose you're trying to balance uh, the lack of a recent run with getting the best out of her at a trip that's probably her minimum, at least anyway. She's probably excels over a mile and a half. And uh, I think Ryan would have been happy once he got to the straight and not he got by him. You know, if, if something joined him, she found more, which she did. They were queuing up behind her. And uh, once he could get to the straight and get into top gear, it was all down to her then in the last two furlongs. And uh, uh, look, he rode her, to, rode her to his strengths. He kept it simple and... Uh, it was a sign of confidence that she was fit and ready to go. Yeah, it's on to the Irish stuff now for us. Um, let's get to the naps last week. Starting, well, starting with you, Juki, punk poet. Um, you are a punk. Sometimes you're a poet and you're also a winner from time to time. This was, uh, this was a nice one. Yeah, for, I, I thought punk poet was interesting because he, he's a horse who's competed at, at up to 10 furlongs, but he really does look like a sprinter. He dropped back from extended six furlongs in Nimerick wasn't a bother on him. I mean, even the way he travels, it wouldn't shock me if Fast Eddie gave him a shot over five furlongs. Uh, now, he's not a horse who's miles ahead of the handicapper, but I, I, I certainly think that he'd have no problem with six furlongs. He could even find a, a bit of improvement of five furlongs. So he, he, he has races in him, all right. Uh, 
Fran, I think your your certainly mates are kind of acquaintances with uh, Pori Quoch, and I doubt you were too kind of enthused when um this the Virginian went from eights to eighteens or so before uh, your nap. But those those who were on, they certainly got the value at SP anyway, or did they? Uh, no, no, <laughs> uh, ran ran too bad to be true in some respects. Uh, I, Porrick did tell me after race that I thought the horse ran flat, haven't had a hard race at Wexford over hurls. Uh, I'd, I'd watch him when he's freshened up, be back on the flat or over jumps. He's, he's got a race in him, but uh, no, bad call on Saturday. The bar one boys, unbelievable run, uh, ran aground, uh, shopping around, <laughs> ran aground at Down Royal, Johnny Mac. Yeah, she travelled all right, um, but she got shorter room, didn't she, turning in, and that was it, game over. She's probably not the most straightforward, but. Um, Oh yeah, that was it. Yeah, there might have been a bit of confusion about my nap on a Roy, um, which was scratched and then finished second at Goran actually. Um, but we move on to this week, and it's a it's a cracking card at Down Royal. Just before we get to Edo McGuinness, Fran, what was it like to ride the track? Uh, Down Royal, when it's fast ground, which you'll get uh, tomorrow, good 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 ground, good ground anyway. Um, it's a uh, it's a tricky track, downhill run to the roadway, um, mm-hmm. low draws in the in any race are massive help because you're on a dog leg. Uh, turn much of the way. Probably one of the fast five furling tracks I've ever ridden on. It's uh, mm. you know, you get out of that chute and you're basically freewheeling all the way down the hill. And then it's a bit deceptive. There is a good rise in the last furlong that you can see the complexion of races changing or a couple of horses finishing off strongly, but definitely pays to be handy and you need to be a strong traveller around if you're off the bridal tree out, you generally don't win there. I think um, the, the unique status of Northern Ireland is well summed up by a trip to Down Royal races where it feels like a cross between, as much of Northern Ireland does, it feels like a cross between Britain and Ireland and Johnny Mac. It's a very lively place to go racing and they do love their points up there. Yeah, it's a super place and they've taken on a very good manager. Emma Meenan joined them last mm. couple of years ago. She's ex-Dundalk and she'll definitely bring real life to it. Emma is very forward thinking and of course you're just a short distance from Dundal or from Belfast city center as well. So, um, yeah, that this weekend is always a great weekend of racing there. Fan of Down Royal, Juki? Oh yeah. I've only, I've only been a couple of times and I mean, you don't see much bunting anymore, but they say they seem to love bunting in the houses around Donegal or around Down Royal, should I say. And mm. what I also, what I would also put to you, Johnny Ward is Galway aside, because that's a bit of an outlier at the festival. Is it the most vibrant betting ring in Irish race? I mean, they don't seem to pay any attention to that fair up there. It's just cash is king, you know? Yeah, yeah. That That's probably a good point. I mean, we're talking in the hypothetical here because, you know, what will the, what will the on-course bookmakers be like when all this returns? We've gotten into this normal now of SPs being returned without them. Um, everyone's been on their phones. In, in fact, a lot of people are thoroughly addicted to their phones after lockdown. What do you think of that, Johnny Mac, actually? How will the on-course boys survive after it all returns to normal if there is such a thing? Um, I'm, I, I don't know. It's, it's just wait and see as such, Johnny. Um, obviously it's a cash game and everything has gone so contactless now. Mm. Um, I'm not sure. It's just going to have to be wait and see. I suppose they hope that people will revert back to using cash again. But personally myself, I see myself, my wallet at home, I haven't used my wallet in over 12 months, like from my own, my own case. And I'm sure lots are the same as well. I'm Carl all the way now. I'm like that as well. Speak, speaking of contactless, Juki, we haven't had an update on your love life in a while, actually. I think the last time um, you were sunbathing with someone or something, how has it since? What about, what about your journalistic instincts? This is unbelievable. Wow, I, ac- I actually had a date during the week on, on Wednesday. Um, and it's the first date I've had with a woman. And it's the first date I've had probably in, uh, in 18 months. So your spider sense must have been tingling. Yeah. How'd you go? I feel like it went well. I, I, I mean, I always feel like it goes well, but she sent me a text to say she, she was going cycling this weekend uh, with her friends. And I, I said to her, oh, well, I might take you out for a debrief next week. And she didn't say no. Yeah, we'll I go tips on each of two as to the second. Uh, date I mean, that's, fair. that's fair. Yeah. That's fair. Yeah. Let, let's get to Aidan McGuinness, um, who is actually um, did this interview under the rain uh, by Windsor Castle. And he spoke about his down royal runners. Aidan McGuinness, how are you getting on? Good now, guys. Nice and damp here in Windsor. Yeah, you've you're you're under an umbrella. You walk past Windsor Castle, and you've just met another. You've just met another royalty in Willie Mullins, I believe. 
Yeah, I've just seen him run up the street there with an umbrella. I'd say he's gone doing what I was doing, looking for a cold. Yeah, it's 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 mad weather. No, Don, Don Royal is on tomorrow, which means obviously you can't go to Don Royal so you've enjoyed yourself at Royal Ascot this week. But very interesting five runners for their big card and capitulation in the first race, a fascinating runner by Elzan. Yeah, very nice filly. Um, I have a good line of form through sea breeze and she would have done a good bit of work with her. She's very professional and as I said, the, the second and third in the race to start runs tomorrow on. I'd be expecting this filly to run a big race. She's very professional in what she does. Um, and Farah as well, you know, I was just looking back at her run in Sligo during the week. The, the lack of stalls was such an issue for so many horses here, but she basically had zero chance from, from the get-go, unfortunately, so she reappears quickly in the 220. Yeah, look, at I was very disappointed with the way Sligo to carry on in Sligo last week. This shouldn't happen in Irish racing, and, you know, we, we've paid. It was uh, totally and utterly a ridiculous thing, so we, we've just had to forget about it. race there tomorrow. Uh, in fairness, she ran a big race at Fairy House previously, Edo. Yeah, she was very she she was unlucky not to win. She was a bit free in Fairy House, but you know today our Sligo was a farce. A draw line through it. I'll continue. Keane didn't give her a hard race, and you know it, it, we, I think she's worth her chance there tomorrow. The track will suit tomorrow. Big long open straight, so there'll be no excuse. The other division of that race, War Hero, he's never won a race on turf, but he wouldn't be anywhere near an odd 65 on the all-weather. He's a better horse, obviously, in the all-weather, but will he finally win a race on turf? Because he will get his ground in the 250. Yeah, I think if you look at his form, he had a couple of very good runs, actually. He was second in Galway to make a challenge one year. Um, mm. If you look at his form, he, he's going to get good fast ground there tomorrow. So I'd be expecting him good draw, keen seven off him. He's practically running off 60, 56 or 57 or 58. So I think he'll run a big, a big race. And the guys are local. The guys down around the start local racetrack. So it would be great for Mark and the lads to have a winner up there. Um, the big race, Aidan O'Brien very strongly represented in the Ulster Derby. Uh, just goes to show how kind of competitive these races are. Star Harbour had took a while to win, but finally got the job done. Very good style last time. And he's building into the horse, I suppose, as you thought he always was. Yeah, listen, a really nice horse, and he'd done what he'd done in Adam that I thought he, you know, what I thought he would do. He was always a very talented horse at home. We did castrate him before in Avon, which made a huge difference. He's, he's concentrating on his job an awful lot more, and I think there's a lot more to come from him. I know the handicapper was hard on him, but um, he gave him 12 plus, he was three out, but I still think he'll cope with it, and he'll, he'll, um, he'll run a big race. Will this track be okay for him? Yeah, and I think the extra two furlongs, as I said, he was going away from him, going away from the field in the end in Navan, and so I think the extra two furlongs in in Na in down right is going to make an awful difference. Though. And just goes to show as well with Aidan O'Brien having three in it, how strong these Premier handicaps can be. It's so it's the big race uh, of the year in Down Royal, but it's living up to its billing here. As I said, there's no hundred grand race in Ireland easy one, no matter where you go. That'd be Galway, Curra, anywhere, Leperson. If there's, a, if there's a hundred grand up for price fund, it's hard one, and that's that. And like everybody will chase money. There's great pots of money, which is brilliant that the prize money in Ireland is so high, and it's great. There's great money there. And as I said, you get more money for winning the Premier than you do for winning the listed race or a group race. Yeah, and your last runner, Mar, is another very well-bred filly by Kingman, who obviously disappointed since she won her maiden, but she's back on nice ground here. Yeah, I have a pack of nice ground, Johnny. Um, I'd be expecting a big run from her. She was disappointing after her last couple of runs, so I threw her out in the field there for a week. I gave her a holiday. Um, we brought her back, and she was lovely and fresh, and we just sort of let her chill out, and she seems to be back bouncing now, and she's fresh and well, and you know, hopefully, uh, ho look, she's a very talented filly if she puts it all together. She's very talented. Just finally, Edo, I spoke to you about this recently, but you, you, you've um, certainly been um, bemoaning the bur bureaucracy of Brexit and the fact that low-grade horses are more or less prescribed from going from over from the Republic of Ireland uh, to Britain at the moment in terms of just a ruling that came in during the pandemic. Um, could you just explain your frustrations there? Yeah, I, like, I think it's totally unfair. That there's probably 40 trainers there through the year will bring low-grade horses to, Ireland, to England to try and win them races. And there's just more opportunities over in England for these horses. And to stop it and the BHJ not allow us to do that, it's very, very, I think it's very unfair for us. And 
like we have an awful lot less racing here and we do go to the trouble of loading horses into putting them on a boat, bringing them over to England and we drive, you know, some lads could drive six, seven hours to run in a low grade handicap to win two or three grand and that's the effort these guys put in. Mm. Can't do it. Anymore. And, you know, a lad, a lad, in a, like a win, as I say, a win is a win in Ireland or in England, like no matter where you go, money doesn't really come into it too much when they're low grade horses as long as they win for lads and, you know, they're not winning for prize money, that's for sure and it, it, it's very unfair. And this is making it, um, it's it's basically kind of um, making it a lot easier for trainers in the north of Ireland to go over to, you know, Britain obviously, but it, it is disadvantaging Republic of Ireland trainers who are already being hit by a lot of money with Brexit. Yeah, look, and we're in the same country, they can cross over, they don't, they've no bills, no, we have to put, take carnets and that and pay uh, registration fees all the time every time we bring horses to England. Twice this week I had to pay 329 euros as a registration fee to get horses out to England because I brought them out in two different loads. Mm. So, and the North of Ireland, a guy from the North can do that without that, which I think it's very, very unfair. And that's just the way Brexit is at the moment. Um, hopefully they'll come to some sort of an agreement we have to get department vets in to inspect our horses before they go. They have to be inspected when they come back. If our farms aren't signed, you know, if we don't get our farm signed, we don't get the money back that we've lodged. We've, I've money lodged in an account this week as well. I've two or three grand lodged in an account with the Dublin Chamber of Commerce. So it's there's so much hassle and it's not worth to do it for a low grade horse. It's not worth doing that. You're What's your best? Probably, yeah. You're adding probably 600 quid onto a journey. Mm. Um, it's it's an interesting topic for the time to have. What's your best chance at Down Royal, you think? I think War Hero will run a big race, and I think Star Harbour will run a massive race in the Derby as well. Thanks a million for your time, Edo. Cheers, Johnny. No problem. Uh, just his last point there, lads, I just want to get to. Um, this issue, which which Edo actually brought up on off the ball with us last week as well, and um, this issue of no, of low grade horses, Fran, being as effectively sub, um, prescribed from running in Britain is quite contentious because contentious because um, it's obviously a bit of a ball breaker getting over there with Brexit as it is, and this was a pandemic thing in that there was you know they're restricting the the um, Irish runners in Britain because you know it was a bit of hassle or whatever with with the pandemic but it, it seems like that you know they've just decided over there well actually this is kind of suitable you know there aren't as many um raiders winning now now i i'm reading into that but i'm pretty sure i'm right fran uh, i'd say you are right johnny um i suppose there's maybe a technical reason for it which i which i don't know maybe the pha might have reason for uh day-to-day -day meetings not wanted to add a hassle of uh dealing with foreign runners if you if you like but on the flip side of that uh you know, I'm sure it's the trainers who've run us in part and then place that Gordon Elliott used to farm are pretty happy they're not coming over and uh, maybe it, it suits them well at the minute and uh, it's a flip side of Brexit. Maybe they're using that to their advantage. And uh, then, then the other side of it is too, if if you have a horse in Ireland that can't get into a race here, should he be in training in Ireland? You know, that's like, you know, should he be I, I know England, what you mean. In, Eng in, 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 Eng in England, if you got to go and run a horse, a horse that you have in Ireland in England because he can't get into race here, is it viable anyway? Is it? I don't know. Yeah, and Johnny Mac, the the DUP is obviously in all over the shop at the moment, but I don't hear them shout from the rooftops about how great it is that you know Brexit has brought a situation where runners in Northern Ireland have free access to the British races, but runners in the Republic, if they're not particularly fast, do not. <laughs> yeah, there's been a few Northern Raiders have come down south in the last few weeks. I see Mr. Watson, is it, has brought down a couple yeah. of them. Yeah. Yeah, well, as 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 Edo said there, we are the one island, or certainly, um, yeah, we, we are the one jurisdiction when it comes to racing. But um, let's listen to last year's winner of the big race uh, at Stone Royal. This was a gambled-on winner for John Murta, who had an unbelievable 2020. They race to the final two furlongs and it's Sunchart pressed by Baby Zeus, one off the rail, then Spring Bank. Swooping on the outside is Red Kelly, straightening up with a furling and a half to go. Sunchart, Baby Zeus, Red Kelly in the centre, then Spring Bank and Ace up and Emperor of the Sun. Inside the final furlong on the Boyle Sports Ulster Derby and on the outside, here comes Red Kelly. Red Kelly and Shane Kelly, winners abounding for Johnny Murtha. Sunchart is second and then Baby is Aesop, Emperor of the Sun, Springbank next. 
Yeah, Red Jerry, a lovely horse. Um, I'll start with you, Fran, on the Ulster Derby. I, I'm, I'm a big fan of this race. Um, fourteen runners as well. You'd probably get reasonable each way, each way terms with bar one. Um, Aidan O'Brien has won some very nice horses in the race. I'm going back as far back as. I remember him running Changing of the Guard in 2009. He doesn't have a great record in the race, but he does run good horses in it. And Edo was obviously very strong in his runner. What's your thoughts on it? I, I, I'd agree totally with you. It's a cracking handicap, and I'd be looking for something at each way of prices, given the nature of it, Johnny. Uh, you can make a case for a lot of them. A lot of them uh, are stepping out maiden company into handicaps with um, ratings in the mid-80s mainly. Um Aidan's too, uh, King of the Castle was very well backed the last day as a stable second string, probably went off hard and he looked uh, on that occasion, paid a price for behind the Mediterranean. He's interesting off 91 uh, for all that he's a maiden going into it. I'm very keen on Safari Quest. I put him up as a nap uh, when he last ran at Navin uh, on, on the show here and I don't think he disgraced himself being second to Morris Operandi. He was 11 lengths back However, I just think he's crying out for a trip. That was 10 furlongs. He's stepping up to a mile, extended mile and a half on Saturday, and he gets in here off 83. He definitely makes a lot of appeal for me, but he's a similar profile to a lot of horses in the race that you could say the same about, I suppose. So many of these, Juki, you could make a case for. I mean, Star Harbour was a horse who, he did have a lot of uh, reputation at Dundalk, but obviously by season start, it wasn't a big surprise that he, he, he you know, has basically progressed since he stepped up and trip. I thought Aido sounded sweet on him, but I mean, King of the Castle, you could obviously make a case for him. You could certainly make a case for um, Aiden's, one of Aiden's other runners as well, Iowa, who didn't run badly at all behind Star Harbour last time. Uh, what are your thoughts? Well, my thoughts are you, you, yourself and Fran have set it up very well. This is going to be a five to one the field race, isn't it? I mean, mm. it, it's very difficult to rule to, to rule any together. My nominal selection was Bear Story from that Star Harbor race. I thought he stuck stuck on well for second. Gets a swing in the weights with the winner. The step up and trip. He's by Kodiak, but um, Kodiak's just a classy stallion. He can get he can get stairs, and the dam is quite stoutly bred. She was a stayer for Jim Bulger, so I feel like on run style he'll improve for the step up and trip. And he was the one I was leaning toward, but it's a very gentle lean in a tough race. Even you look at Hellbent last time, Johnny Mac absolutely hacked up at Sligo. Did look a bit of a good thing in Maiden Company, but now up to 90. And mm. um, Jessica Harrington does tend to target this race a bit. Yeah, I like Noel Meats, Philly. She is hybrid. Noel won this with the Dews Arc two years ago. and Very well backed. She won over course and distance last time. They've given her nine pounds for it, but Sam Ewing's five pound claim will help offset quite a bit of that. I think she's going to be a big player in it, Johnny. Of course, the thing is as well, Fran, like when you have a filly, you have the, the Ulster Oaks as your backup. So the fact that Noel is targeting this race is maybe a tip in itself. It is, and uh, course form does count for a lot. She's got a bit more to take on uh, today, but, uh, or tomorrow, should I say. Uh, but still, she's pretty unexposed. She's got a strong traveller, and uh, Noel has gone for gold with her. So, yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't put you off. But like we can go down through the whole field and nearly say the same thing about them. We can make a case for them. So it's take your pick nearly, isn't it? I remember I was doing the race and post um, spotlights for the 2019 race and the winner on that occasion was Camphor who um, went into the race and I'm just looking this up now. She went in on the back of winning a maiden and I couldn't for the life of me believe that she was given a mark of 78. If you win a maiden in Ireland, you're almost invariably... Actually, if you just come out of a maiden and you make your first handicap, I think 99% of the time the handicapper is very, very uh, cautious in terms of the mark he gives. But Camper was given a mark of 78, which to me looked like she was absolutely chucked in. And she did duly oblige. And last year, we also had an impressive winner trained by a man uh, who we've already mentioned. Out wide is Bella Brazil, followed by Hamley. Off the elbow, two to go, and still in front is Wilderness, with trying to close in second place, Elizabeth of Aragon. And then comes Katiba, Bella Brazil, too soon to panic. Racing inside the final furlong, Wilderness and Elizabeth of Aragon are coming away from the field. Wilderness on the far side with Elizabeth of Aragon, slowly but surely getting there as they go towards the line. Elizabeth of Aragon has got up to run down. Wilderness, then too soon to panic, the toy of North. Yeah, Juki, this is a lovely backup race. Aidan obviously won it last year. Um, he's a horse here, Martinique, who's by Le Havre. Now, I can't think of a single horse he's had by Le Havre, Le Havre or whatever you want to call it, other than Martinique, um, who comes in here off a mark of 90 after winning readily at Le Stole. 
Oh, yes. Well, and uh, as you say, gets the standard handicap rating of, of 90, but an Aidan O'Brien, well, well-bred filly, there's not, nothing to say she isn't she isn't well handicapped. Again, I thought this was a tricky race, but I sort of half liked Talakre, who also has got a mark mm. of 90. It's just a, a copy and paste job, this handicap, isn't it? But she had some decent two-year-old form, not a great comeback in a, a, a listed race in Navin. Granted, it was a, a stakes race. She just ever she seems to do everything a little bit slowly. I know the chair puts the blinkers on her hair. She's had a bit of a break. Hopefully, she's strengthened up by 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 Flinch here. I'm just sort of hoping that the the, the blinkers will sharpen her up and that she can recapture that two year old form. I did a quick um copy and and find actually there. Sorry, rather and Fran Berry. I don't know if you've ever actually won this race, have you? Uh, I did. I won it for John Oxter on a filly called um, Miss Keller, uh, who went on to oh, be yeah. a very good filly in America. Yeah, yeah. So that was that was it. Uh, the, the Derby, and I don't think I ever won the Derby. I hardly ever run the Derby, actually, the way it's used to throw me out a bit. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. No no issue with that after your 12 points again this last night, whatever. No, no, eight points. But... <laughs> okay. um, what do you, yeah, let's, let's just get that clear. Uh, what, what do you like in this? Uh, I'd be with Yuki. I would give Talaker a chance uh, with the blinkers on. I don't think, don't think we we have ever seen what your lines have seen of her at home. She's a good reputation. Like take, she went to Bellistown last year. She's a half sister to Siskin, and uh, she runs into into pretty gorgeous in a Bellistown maiden. And uh, she got off the mark at uh, Gorn on her last run of the year, and that wasn't too bad a run. Uh, against Rocky Sky in, in that list race the last day. So for me, Talaker with the blinkers on it, I like that kind of, uh, and the Lions team, the way they're going, it's you know, hard to look beyond. Salan Lines going up for a hat-trick in this, uh, Johnny Mac. Yeah, that's um, Andrew Slattery's horse. Six, uh, got a big hike up for its win the last day. I thought Jessica's fully down the bottom off a, a low weight, Nathan Cross rise that won at Limerick uh, earlier in the year, and it ran in that race won by Benno, the last day that might have a chance he could run a place uh johnny it looks quite open though what do you like and uh, the rest of the card that's for me yep okay um i taught fuzzy stacks horse in one of the earlier races i thought I had a chance although adam mcginnis would let would lead you into his horse johnny i thought he sounded very very sweet on that newcomer in the opener Mm, absolutely, yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, thanks, Tato, for his, his time. Uh, what else do you like in the card, Fran? Uh, first race, uh, I'd like Kalita Sunrise, trained by Johnny Murta. Todd should have won up there the last day over the course and distance. Uh, it was the best run to date, but uh, it definitely, definitely one that just seems to be coming good. And uh, on the rest of it, uh, excuse me, uh, Sasfana in the 220 only got, got four pounds for winning at uh, Leopardstown last week. Uh, first winner for about 10 years for trainer Dermot Murphy. I think she's she got away well with a four pound rise and uh, in the 220 Sasfana. And in the 435, if Mary Cruz comes out of stalls on mm. terms, she'll win, she'll win. But that's the if she threw the race away a bit last night. Uh, in Leopardstown, she was third, wasn't she? So if she backs up, she's rotten with ability, but it's getting out of stalls are the big problem. Yeah, interesting. Siobhan Rutledge doesn't ride her actually. She rides the horse that um beat Owner Roy last day at Gorn. But uh, I I I've done a good bit on this card because um obviously it's the only card of the weekend, and I I agree with John Mary Cruz, and she's a great chance. What do you like, Juki? Well, I only have one more, Johnny, and it's my nap. So do you want me to hold let's, fire? Let's that? hold. Let's hold fire. Um, and let's let's give the naps, and then we'll finish up. Um, with something that we like at Royal Ascot. Um, I think we'll probably, I think at least two of us will like the same horse, which would be fairly uninspiring, but a winner is a winner. Uh, let's start with your nap, Juki. Oh, yeah, so I'm taking you both on with this right turn in the 4.35. So Jairlines and Kodiak uh, will hopefully have a, a good day in Down Royal on Saturday. So this right turn is interesting. Three runs, didn't show a whole lot in maidens. And the connections mustn't have felt like it was that well handicapped uh, for its opening, uh, its handicap bow, should I say, because went off 14 to 1, but ran a race full of promise, still a bit green, running on the end for fifth, and the race could not be working out better. Uh, two, of, two of them have won, one of them has finished second, the horses have finished in front. Uh, I feel like it's only a half a furlong step up in trip. Maybe it, the optimum trip will be a mile and a half, but I, I, I think off a pound higher than the Leopardstown run, with the extra experience, well enough handicapped to get off the mark here. Fran? 
Uh, on Saturday, my nap uh, is at uh, Down Royal, and I'm going to go each way Safari Quest in the Ulster Derby, given the, there'll be extra places and probably five or six to one to field Safari Quest each way. Johnny Mac? And I'll go with Noel Meads, Philly. Uh, she's hybrid in the Ulster Derby. We're taking each other on there. Um, I'm actually going to take you on the first race, Fran. I think this is a very interesting maiden. Um, like I do expect that Kalita Sunrise should reverse the form of Dream Oasis, even though uh, she's had a couple of starts more, sorry, one start more. She was plainly unlucky the last day and she, she rattled home. Then I'm going to take on both here with one at a price, this hot sunset, whose trainer Joe Murray has been doing well. And this horse has run last time behind Silver Surfer is very notable because she was drawn wide. She dropped in. She was, she met trouble in running. She wasn't given a hard time at all. And it was also a massive improvement from her first run. Um, so she's very interesting to me for the, at a price 110 uh, hot sunset. Now, time for the Royal Ascot selection. I'm, I'm just going to cut to the chase here, Fran. And um, I imagine you'll probably agree with me here. Um, if, if, if this point Longsdale is beaten in the chest and we may go home. <laughs> yeah, I wish you took that five to two that uh, mm. bar one were offering there about ten uh -huh. two weeks ago, wasn't it? Uh, that was that was quite attractive, and uh, we were slow there, Johnny. Yeah, Point Lonsdale, I think he's good at two year old. Him and Doctor Zemf of Jar Lines that we've seen today this year in Ireland, and I think Point Lonsdale wins. And uh, I would give a very good mention of ground permitting uh, or getting away to ground. Falcon 8, he's been crying out for an extreme trip. He gets up two and a half mile, two miles five into Queen Alexandra. How he gets into it with the conditions, he must just slip in along with Stratum. And I think Falcon 8 is just going to excel over that trip. Yeah, um, DK obviously hasn't had many runners this week, but that would be a nice way for him to finish up. Uh, Juki? Uh, well, Sonila for me. I backed Sonila mm. at the, the, the five day stage with, with a, a sense that this rain was coming towards the end of the week uh, but the last I looked she's still 16 to 1 I'd have to check that now uh, after the show but I, I kind of can't believe the price of her because I thought that was a massive effort the last day albeit in lower grade but it's very difficult in any race particularly in a sprint race to start twice I mean she was molested coming out of the stalls had to get going again then she got to the got to the front saw, saw off the horse it looked like she had to beat and then had to go and see off another one and she did both. She's a mare who improved no end last year. She she might have, have reached her peak just yet. And it was only when I was talking to Fran about this, actually, last week, he mentioned me that he thought she'd nearly won the Greenlands as well. But there was some mix-up between the jockey and the starter taking off the hood. So she blew the start there as well. So she's definitely better than her two perfectly acceptable runs this season. She loved the ground, improving Philly, 16 to 1, too big. Yeah, that's not, and I'd just like to preempt Johnny Mac here by saying that Bar One and Racing TV, um, we do not support molestation mid racing at all in any races, do we, Johnny Mac? We certainly do not, Johnny. Um, my selection, Dream of Dreams, I put that up in the Diamond Jubilee. It's been mugged in the last two runnings, and uh, I think it could finally land it tomorrow. Enjoy the weekend, lads. Thanks, Johnny. You too. Have a good one. Um, yeah, and thanks very much to Adrian McGuinness for coming on and giving us his views on Down Royal. We'll be back next week with On The Wire, thanks to Bar One Racing. Thanks for tuning in to On The Wire Racing TV's podcast, uh, brought to you in association with Bar One Racing. And if you enjoyed the show, don't forget to leave a review. Uh, give us a like and subscribe so you don't miss the next episode. And this podcast is available on video format in all its glory on YouTube. And you'll also find us on racingtv.com and on audio at Apple Podcasts, Spotify and numerous other platforms. Uh, don't forget if you are having a bet this weekend following any of our selections or so on, gamble responsibly and do visit begambleaware.org for more information.